When I started working on Slope Crashers, the most important goal for me was to make physics that feel great and fun to play around with. Because for me personally, that is how most extreme sports games or arcade racing games usually fall apart. And in this video, I will try to lead you through my journey of creating the custom character movement that I came up with. Tell you a few missteps that I made along the way and yeah, what I ultimately ended up implementing. And while I know this is a very specific genre that I'm working on, uh, I think in some ways there are a few ideas in there that could come in hand in other genres as well. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So before I made Slope Crashers, most of my games were done with a very defaulty uh, game character moveset with jumping and walking and that was basically it. And well, so my first idea to implementing a snowboard movement controller was... So I thought the way to go was just use what I know, but manipulate it somehow. So I grabbed the default third person movement template from Unreal, uh, terraformed some terrain, slapped the lemur on top and a board underneath and started working with that. So the idea was to just use the walking movement and let the game automatically handle the forward and backwards input and only let the player handle the left and right input to steer. Um, and that actually worked great for a minute there, but over time while working with this and creating level layouts and also testing it a lot, I just kept on running into problems. Like for example, as soon as I was hitting an uphill ramp and the automatic acceleration that I implemented was moving the character backwards, that just happened immediately. And that's just how the character movement controller is, is created in Unreal, because it's done for walking and not for snowboarding or sliding. And yeah, I, I mean, I, I created a workaround for that, but I still ran into all kinds of problems with the biggest one being driving in half pipe or on walls, because the movement of walking is just not made for this. And at some point it felt like I was coding more workarounds than actual logic. So after already working with this behavior for two months or something, I scratched it completely and implemented something new. So I remembered when I made my mobile game Ratterdash, which was just a very simple uh, 2D game about a rat jumping through obstacle courses, that I actually ran into similar problems because that had some very like sliding physics as well, but in 2D. And I also used the character controller for that. And the solution I came up with there was actually to just use the flying movement of the character because that basically just behaves like a rigid body, while still having the perks of the Unreal character controller, like replication for multiplayer. So the new idea was to just use the flying movement and move the character with forces. So I started by just applying a gravity force, and even though I could not control that yet, it already felt much more natural than the walking movement after weeks of hacking in workarounds. But yeah, now I had a new problem. How can I make this controllable and feel like a snowboard? And the solution was to calculate friction forces and apply that to the board. Basically, I tried to get a few direction vectors and draw that uh, into my game world so I can see what's happening. So the vectors that I needed were the floor normal vector, but also the forward vector of the board, which changes, like you, you can turn around the character and then the forward vector should change because you should also be able to go reversed. And also the side angle of the board that's facing towards the mountain peak, because that's where the friction should happen always towards the edge that's on the mount. So after getting all the directions, I just started applying sideways forces to it and it worked. Uh, I suddenly had a physics set for snowboarding where I could already steer down the mountain and it felt much more natural than the old approach ever did. However, there were still a few hiccups. Like one thing I noticed was that you got slower as soon as you started steering. So after months of working with that, I changed the forces from not going uh, towards the right or left vector of the board, but uh, towards a 90 degree angle of the velocity into the direction of the board edge that's facing the mountain. So what happened now basically was not that I applied a force that is reducing the velocity, but I applied a force that's like perpendicular to the velocity, which meant I didn't lose speed anymore. And in, it immediately felt much more fun to play with that. So the next problem that I ran into was that sometimes the character just got stuck when the incline changed a little bit. So for that, I made two workarounds. 
The first thing I tried is to actually let the character hover above the ground. So after the whole movement was finished in a frame, I actually gave him a little bit of an offset to the floor. So he was basically hovering above it. You cannot see that though, because I moved the mesh downwards again. Like uh, this is how this is actually done. Like this is a capsule that is moving and the mesh is just in there and doing its fancy animations. But all the collision is done with the capsule. And the capsule is above the ground, but the mesh is still a little bit beneath the capsule. So it still looks like he's sliding on the floor but it's much smoother now and it doesn't get stuck that often and my other solution to fix the few times it was happening was to check the hit event um, because when the character gets stuck it means he hits something and in the hit event I just calculated the angle between the hit and the character up vector and if it is was like a very small angle this meant it's a floor where he should drive on and when that happened, I just realigned the velocity to go to the floor again and just realigned that and kept the speed the same. And that solved those problems. And that's basically that. That was a short glimpse into my roller coaster of implementations. And yeah, if you want to work on a custom movement controller yourself, I hope this helped in any way. Uh, or if you have any more questions, feel free to ask me in the comments, in my Discord or in my Twitch channel. And yeah, let's chat there. So yeah, I hope you liked the video. Uh, give a sub, thumb and bell if you want. And see you in the next one. Bye.